Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, very interesting video today that ended up in my feed. What do Jews think about Muslims? By the channel, no contradiction. So of course, in the current political climate, if you know what I mean, it is interesting to hear what Jews think about Muslims. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Shalom Aleichem, my brothers and sisters. Shalom Aleichem. Uh, today I want to discuss aleichem, what the Jews think of Muslims. Now... Obviously, I cannot really speak for all the Jews, but I can, you know, speak for myself. You must be a Russian and Jew. I just you can would like it. to say Ashkenazi. that, you know, I really respect the monotheism of Muslims. You Mashallah. know, the fact that they worship one God, the fact that they don't tolerate any, you know, any sort of partnership to God, any sort of phys physicality or plurality to God. Nice. So this is nice. something Good I think you. that's, you know, exactly in line with, you know, the teachings of the Torah. I have to interrupt him right there. I wouldn't say that it's in direct alignment with the Torah. Quite the opposite. In the Torah, you can still find certain passages that seem polytheistic or henotheistic. For example, Exodus 15, 11, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? So this passage especially sounds very henotheistic. Yahweh, the God, is the God, the highest God amongst the other gods, right? There is a plurality. There are many gods mentioned here, obviously. And if you look honestly into the history of Judaism, you will see many such vague concepts in the beginning of Judaism. And then later, when Islam came about, Judaism changed again. Judaism is not preserved as Islam is. And Jews will admit that absolutely that Judaism changed throughout the years, right? The Torah is not in heaven and therefore the rabbis have the ultimate authority. And you can clearly see a development to a purer form of monotheism within Judaism as well after the advent of Islam. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, even though Jews and Muslims, I would say, are very similar in religion wise, um, in you know in regards to the laws that we have that is true. Uh, but unfortunately you know, i think the situation the political situation in israel and you know the palestinians has created you know like some sort of hate between jews and muslims and that's really unfortunate and i think there's probably going to come a time when this is going to pass you know um uh, you know so so this is one thing now Another thing everything will pass, but like for to it to pass, I think the situation Jews, has to pass we have as certain well. Things that we should, in fact, learn from Muslims, you know, Humility. and as, as hard as it, it is to admit, but certain things I think the Muslims are doing it more correctly than we as Jews do. And I'll give you several examples. Um, so, for example, the names, you know, all the Muslims or the Arabs uh, that I know. They have their names, you know, which really I believe are Jewish names, like, or at least the names from the Torah, from the, you know, so the names, for example, like Ibrahim, or the names like Yaakov. And what I know okay, is Okay, one second. The guy actually seems quite nice, but unfortunately he is misguided, of course, because he has the assumption that Ibrahim is based upon the Jewish name Abraham. Right? So yes, Abraham and Ibrahim are the same person. However, the question that you have to ask yourself is, was Abraham a Jew? And the answer to this is, of course, no. Even Jews will admit that, if they read, look into their scriptures, that Abraham himself is pre-Judaism. He was a monotheist. And the same applies to Noah, for example, as well. You call him Noah. In Islam, we call him Nuh. Yes, those are the same people. However, that is not Judaism, especially if you look into where Abraham came from, what kind of language he spoke. It is modern day Iraq. What I noticed is that Muslims, they pronounce the names, you know, their children. I don't see them corrupting the names. I mean, Ibrahim is Ibrahim. You know, Yaakov is Yaakov. Whereas in, in, with Jews, there's unfortunately, I notice corruption. For example, Abraham, for some reason becomes an Avi, or um, uh, Yosef, you know, Yosef is a beautiful name, 
Yosef for some reason becomes Yossi or Yos or Sefi, and um, you know the name Abraham. It has a meaning. Abraham means the father of nations. Av right. means father. Raham from the word Hamon, the father of multitude of nations, somebody who's respected by many nations. So I don't see a reason why, as Jews, sometimes we corrupt the names to make it shorter or whatnot. I'm not sure we call why do Jews Avi corrupt? instead of Abraham. So why? I think this is something we as Jews should not be doing. And I think, uh, you know, the Muslims are a good example for us. I mean, we should, uh, you know, learn from them in this. You know, just because we if have... If they're a good I, example, I, I actually really like this guy. He seems genuine. I mean, after all, he went out of his way to make this video. If you see the Muslims as a good example, what does that tell you? If they're truly theologically a good example, wouldn't that then mean in turn that they theologically have the right doctrine by God? And therefore, instead of just learning from them, why not look deeper into Islam and ultimately accept it? Oh. I think it's maybe part of the part of the what's called like the exile mentality that unfortunately we still have. You know, as Jews, we've been exiled for two thousand years. Why? We've been persecuted. You know, scattered throughout the nations, and maybe some Why? somehow we got the tendency to try to hide. You know, the authenticity of our names, like Abraham. Maybe mm. a Jew is embarrassed to say it. You know, in public or call his children Abraham, so they started changing the names and whatnot. And I think this is part of the exile mentality. But now we've been back to our land, you know. It's already been, what, 60 years, a little right. bit more. You're back in your and land. And I think this is time for us to, you know, to return <sighs> to the authenticity. That's why, man. That's just why. And like that, my sympathy for this person is automatically gone. It's diminished. There is nothing left any longer. Because, as I said in the beginning, he is nice but he is misguided and therefore of course he has misguided perspectives on the rest of life as well he truly believes that they returned to their land their land israel in the middle east and he's saying that with a russian accent you are descendant of the khazars this is what you are you are a european that adopted judaism hundreds of years ago this is just factual you're not returning to your land this land belongs to the Palestinians. To return to the authenticity of Judaism, meaning, you know, we're established. Yeah. It's time if for us to establish If you would return to our authenticity, culture, your name would be you know, Oleg. The way Alexei. it's meant to be from the Torah. And without, uh, you know, without trying to hide things. And I think this is, um, you know, one thing that we should learn from Muslims are the names. Another thing. I think which is an important thing that as Jews we should learn from Muslims is this, is that when they read the Quran, I don't know if any of you heard of this, but or heard them read the Quran, but when they read the Quran, they take their time. They read it slowly, clearly, pronouncing every syllable and every letter. Where in Judaism, unfortunately, go to the synagogue on Saturdays and, you know, we read the whole parsha, and unfortunately, Usually, I'm not saying it's always the case, but usually the guy who's reading the Torah, he reads it really fast. He reads it, you know, fast that sometimes it's, you can't really follow even exactly. And I think this is another thing that we as Jews must learn from Muslims. When we read the Torah, Torah is a holy, holy word of God. Every letter, every syllable came directly from God. And therefore, when we read the Torah, we should be... We would disagree here, of course. It's so obviously as Muslims, we believe in Tahrif, which means there was corruption within those scriptures. But nevertheless, you don't have to look into the Muslim Islamic tradition. You can simply look into secular scholars and they will come to the same conclusion, of course, that the Torah and the Bible have been corrupted. And therefore, when we read the Torah, we should be reading it carefully, slowly, pronouncing each letter. And now, why exactly are we doing this? I'm not sure. Maybe I'm thinking maybe because... Since on Saturday mornings during the prayer, we have to read the whole parsha, the whole portion of the Torah, which could take, you know, several pages, maybe 10 pages, I'm not sure, depending on the... So, so maybe since we have to read the whole portion and, you know, obviously we don't eat before we pray and, you know, people are hungry and the prayer already takes like two hours on, on, this, on Saturday. 
So maybe that's, that's the wrong, reason man. why, you know, if we would be reading every word, we would be spending Juma like five hours doing the pra prayer on Saturday, hungry. Maybe that's the reason why. But if that's the case, at least on Mondays and Thursdays, when we also read the Torah and we read not, not a big portion of it, you know, just maybe 10 psukim or so, at least at that time, we should be, I think, you know, taking it more carefully and, um, you know, reading it more carefully and taking our time. Um, another thing I think we as Jews must learn from Muslims, especially our Jewish sisters, is the modesty. You know, uh, if you notice, uh, why don't you just Muslim become Muslim, women, man? The way so they easy. cover their hair, you know, they cover their hair, their cheeks, their neck, pretty much. Some yep. of them even cover their faces. And I think uh, Jewish um, sisters have a lot to learn from this, and they should, you know, adopt the you know the hijab and in fact some jews do that so um yep. so i'm not saying that all christians jews, used you know, to do that not too. do that but there are some jews i think left tahor is a is a group but yeah, uh, yeah I, know anyways, about I think that when it comes you know even though jews and Mo muslims became sort of a, of an enemies you know when it comes to israel and palestine that does not mean that we should be dishonest. You know, I think we should be honest and certain things that are done correctly. Great. So then you should be honest about the history of the Palestinians in that land. And that, as you mentioned yourself, you guys have been there for 60, 70 years. And I'm speaking about the Europeans that settled there. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is just factual. So please be honest there as well. You know, among others, I think we should learn from and um, we should adapt and hopefully you know because as jews what did the prophet isaiah say that we are supposed to be a light unto the nations you know the nations are supposed to learn from us when it comes to monotheism when it comes to the law of the torah so hopefully and i'm not saying we didn't do that i think we did do that you know i think all the monotheistic religions somehow emerged from the fact that there were jews among them that lived among them so um but I you know i think if we do judaism the correct way the authentic the authentic way i think we would be more successful in uh, bringing light to the whole world thank you for watching all right guys and this is it for today's video as i said throughout it i do have sympathy for the guy because ultimately he seems like someone that is seeking and he already acknowledges what is true in Islam. If he looks further, he will realize that Islam is the ultimate truth and that everything that he is seeking and wanting to change in his own religion, in Judaism, ultimately leads him to become a Muslim, inshallah. Let's pray for his guidance, of course, because he is observing his religion and he finds certain flaws. Hey, you guys are rushing through the scripture. Our women are not covered, etc., etc. So if you correct those things, then you get Islam. This is why we call the Quran the criterion, of course, the lens that you look through in order to see what has gone wrong within your own religion. In some religions more, in some religions less, of course. If you look into Christianity, you realize that they really went astray because they started worshipping Jesus. In Judaism, on the other hand, you don't even acknowledge Jesus as a prophet. So Islam came to correct all of it. As I said throughout the video as well, the guy unfortunately is of course still misguided, especially politically. I don't want to get into it too deep. We all know the truth and we all understand who that land belongs to. But nevertheless, theologically, he already starts seeing the truth. So therefore, yet again, let's pray for his guidance. And if you're watching this video, I officially invite you to Islam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>